the Peterborough lift lock. Peterborough, Ontario, like all small towns, has its lover's lane. Here, it's called Armour Hill, and couples have been parking out here for generations. It's just creepy enough to make a girl want to squeeze up close. But what happened here one night scared John Derrick out of his wits. So me and my girlfriend Jane were kicking back listening to a CD. I feel like stretching my legs. Little did John Derrick know, as he enjoyed a leisurely cigarette, that he was about to become the victim of a phantom virago. I hear this far off scream, and I turn back to ask her if she heard it, but she had the music up too loud. and this wild woman jumps me from behind. Curse all of you! And she screams, curse, curse you, I curse you. At least it sounded like that's what she was saying. Okay, I'm struggling, trying to get her off my back, off. all the Jane. while yelling like a madman. Jane. Finally, Jane comes out of the car to look for me. When Jane gets to where we are, the thing vanishes but I can smell smoke, as if from a wood fire. Jane says she saw nothing, she heard nothing, except for my yell. Since the 1850s, the Armour Hill area of Peterborough, Ontario has been associated with death and tragedy. From the violence of frontier settlements, to the suicides of star-crossed lovers, to the fatal accidents associated with the construction of the lock. And for almost as long, there's been a story of a woman, a ghost woman, one who, some say, may be responsible for it all. For over a hundred years, there have been periodic sightings, but only to men, of a burned and bloody woman rampaging in anger through the bushes around Armour Hill. Her disappearance, followed by the smell of wood smoke. Is she an urban legend? A figment of teenagers' imagination? Or is she a spirit, unable to rest in peace? Local legend has it that a witch was burned in Peterborough in the 1840s. Until her horrible death, she had been a lady of ill repute by the name of Mary. Her clientele comprised the up-and-comers of this burgeoning mill town, the wealthy lumber bosses. But Mary, too, had plans to move up in the world. She would take her earnings from a life of sin and start anew, where no one knew her past. But Mary's decision to quit the trade was not well received by her gentlemen friends. Women were scarce in those parts, even those of easy virtue. One man was given the task of convincing her to stay. But when Mary threatened to reveal her client list, the man, fearing for his reputation, panicked. conspirators concocted a story that Mary was a witch. After all, had she not bewitched them all? They wrapped her up and took her out to Armour Hill. They tied her limp body to a stake and built a bonfire with dry timber, all this time thinking Mary was dead. But as the flames began to shoot up from the dry kindling, Mary regained consciousness. Just as she was about to succumb to the flames, she looked at her murderers and cursed them and their offspring for their evil deed. 
Since that day, the area around Armor Hill has been the scene of tragedy and mishap. The whole area is said to be haunted, the spirits disturbed by Mary's curse. When we come back, deaths at the piers and hauntings at the base of the Peterborough lift lock. Ever since they burned the witch at Armor Hill, the place has been a scene of tragedy and mishap. The entire area is said to be haunted, even the lift lock. Most say it's a direct result of Mary's curse. This is the largest pair of hydraulic lift locks in the world. From the beginning of construction in 1896 till its completion in 1902, thousands of transient workers from all over the world came to work on the locks. They were paid a dollar a day. The work was brutally hard and dangerous. Workers were frequently hurt. It is believed at least one man is buried in the 26,000 cubic tons of concrete that it took to form these pylons. When the locks opened to sea traffic in 1902, they immediately became a magnet for hapless stricken individuals, seeking to end their lives by throwing themselves from the piers. In 1922, Mrs. Agnes Cherritt climbed to the top of the lift lock. Her son Roy had recently married a woman Agnes thought unworthy of him. Not willing to live with the humiliation, she jumped to her death. Five days later, Roy's body surfaced from the depths of the canal, just a few feet from where his mother had been found. Then in 1924, there was a lover's suicide. Mr. Samuel Taylor and Mrs. J. Sharp had been illicit lovers trapped in loveless marriages. They were found floating together, fingers so tightly interlocked they had to be pried apart for their separate proper burials. But their spirits are together as they never could be in life forever, roaming around the lock. Over the last century, the suicide toll at Peterborough Locks has risen steadily and the workers whose jobs take them deep into the base of the mighty piers became convinced the place was haunted. I was down in here late one night. It was after the lock had closed. We were working on an alignment valve. We had several men down in here and we were tearing the alignment out of the main crossover valve and we bring it up here to the workbench to work on it. We were all standing in this room. We had our backs to the bench at the time and there was a loud clang, clatter. One of the large crescent wrenches, in my description, jumped right off the table, landing with a loud clatter on the floor behind me. I knew that I had set it right in the middle of the workbench and there was no way that it could have just tipped or fallen off. It was way too heavy just to be blown or pushed off to the side and it landed with a resounding clatter on the floor here in this concrete. It really echoes. My name is Dieter Witt and I've been working here for the Trent Severn Waterway for about 15 years now. Uh, one incident that happened to me, I was coming down through doing a routine open up early in the morning and uh, come up through the tunnel and there were the set of hip waiters sitting in front of the elevator door. Not really thinking anything of it, I threw them off to the side, made my way back up and kind of waited for everybody to tell me what was going on and I asked questions about, well, who was the one setting up these uh, hip waiters? Well, nobody admitted to it. I thought to myself, maybe there is really something going on here. About a week or 10 days ago, we had a weird experience down here at the bottom of the lock. Dieter was at the bottom and he was stepping into the pit underneath the chamber. The chamber that's transferring down is 18,000 metric tons. So we make sure to block the door open with a shovel so that it doesn't automatically lock behind us. They're set to automatically lock. We always block it with a shovel. Dieter stepped into the pit, turned around to come back out again. The shovel that he had placed in the way of the door so that it wouldn't be able to close was physically moved about four feet facing the opposite direction and lying right at the bottom here down in the hallway. Removed right by at least four or five feet and facing the opposite way. Very, very strange. Oh, definitely. I, I would definitely think there's uh, things going on here. I'm not a firm believer on it, but there is uh, things that kind of catch me off guard and uh, I'm never too sure. You know, there are always different things going on. Is Mary's curse from her burning pyre still at work at Armour Hill? Are the spirits at the lift block lingering to protect the workers who come after them? One thing is certain. A man out late at night on Armour Hill should beware the wrath of Mary, the falsely accused witch of Armour Hill.